Ah, want some tea? Oh, yes, please. And now? Hmm, teacher, I think you're losing your magical touch. Hmm, why? The tea is not hot. Oh, let me fix that now. That's amazing. I wonder if... You wonder if I can teach you magic too? I can't. You know a magician would never reveal his secrets. I was going to say, I wonder if there is a latent heat for steam. I mean, since there's a latent heat of fusion when ice turns to water, then surely there should be a latent heat of something when water turns to steam, right? You mean to say that my magic is not impressive enough for you? Shall I turn you into a rabbit? Teacher, I'm serious. Ever since we went through the lesson on latent heat of fusion, I've been wondering if there is something similar when liquids boil, like water in the kettle. I realised that most kettles boil for quite a while before they turn themselves off. Okay, okay. Like the latent heat of fusion, there is something called the latent heat of vaporization, which is the energy it takes for a substance to turn from liquid to gas. So there is such a thing, and it's called the latent heat of vaporization. Yes, the latent heat of vaporization is the energy required to overcome the intermolecular forces that causes the molecules to stay together as a liquid. It is very similar to the latent heat of fusion, except the latent heat of fusion is the amount of thermal energy required to completely melt an object at its melting point, while the latent heat of vaporization is the amount of heat that is required to completely vaporize a liquid at its boiling point. Hang on. So is this latent heat of fusion the same for melting as well as freezing? I mean, melting is a change of state from solid to liquid, while freezing is a change of state from liquid to solid, right? So the energy required should be the same for melting and freezing, since they occur at the same temperature, right? Good question. Let's ask your classmates. <laughs>